Hi y'all, thank you again for checking out my channel. It's Will. Uh, it's either April now or it's almost going to be April, depending on how quickly I can get this video edited. So I thought it would be a good idea to make another little trip to the not quite dollar store, see what I can find, and show it off to you guys because I know you like it. So I do have a big Daiso haul and we're going to get into that. Um, and I mentioned how great Daiso is and how wonderful it is to have Daiso stores in San Francisco because we really don't have a lot of other options. But before we had Daiso, we had a different store, Japanese dollar store called Ichiban Khan. Uh, it's still there, of course, uh, but Ichiban means best or number one. One plus bon is Ichiban. And Khan is sort of a store indicator, so it means like best store. However, since Daiso came into the picture, it's really not the best store, so they might change the name to like Nibon Khan. Who knows? Um, so I wanted, to, but they do have some interesting things. I, I still ch stop in there if I do go up to Japantown. So I just want to show you what I got from there. Word of warning if you do go to Ichiban Khan, it is not usually a dollar fifty store. I was really surprised when I came in that a lot of this stuff was like a dollar eighty, and I was like, "Oh my goodness!" Um, because you know, <laughs> paying a dollar fifty is already an issue. Paying a dollar eighty is even worse. Uh, ultimately, I bought about twelve items. It cost about twenty bucks before tax, so it really came out to a dollar seventy because some things were cheaper, some things were more expensive, but still not the best. It's hard for all of us, I know. Uh, but they do have cute things that I wanted to show you what I got there before we move on to Daiso. One thing I will say for Ichiban Khan is that they have even more cute erasers than Daiso does. So see here they have like a, uh, it's a manta ray or a bat ray or something. Very cute. Um, I really wish I had like nephews or nieces or someone <laughs> that I could give these things to because I just keep collecting them hoping one day I'll find some child who really will be happy with them. Um, when friends have gone to visit their, their families back home and have young siblings, I'm like, here, let me make a care package for your nephew or niece because I need to get it, you know, bust some of this stash. So this one's really cute. Um, these I think were only like 78 cents, so that's where it was evening out. Um, also I got this which I thought at the time was the was a koala just based off the ears but now I realize that that hole is in its real nose it's actually a space for let me see focus this little trunk thing so the trunk plugs in there it's a lot more three-dimensional and really upon second looking I realize that you see Z-O-O there it's not zoo but in Japanese it would be zo which is Japanese for the elephant so yeah it's indeed it's an elephant I thought that was cute um, if you need a care package for a kid, maybe you should send, draw me a line and I could get something together with all my stickers and erasers. That'd be really cute because I think these are great things that you're not going to see in a lot of other parts of America. So we really are fortunate to have uh, such variety in San Francisco. So next I got another craft punch. I ha had gotten one before. Um, I really like having these. They're just very convenient. I don't have a Cricut or something like that. So if I'm going to die cut anything, I need to have a punch. This one is a little Cupid. So once again, not very seasonal. I'll have to wait a while, but I'm just prepping for next year because it's going to come either way and I can save it. I also got this cute little notepad uh, with bears. Um, you can see on the side there's actually color variation as you get deeper into the notepad and here's the back of it uh, so you can write it either on the back of the page or on the bear's belly that's just cute you know post-its can be so boring so why not liven things up and really if I use a post-it I'm probably the only one that's gonna see it so if it's cute hey no, no one to judge me so these are cute so one thing that Ichiban Khan really has going for it is that they have a lot of Japanese beauty and body products I picked these up, I, I think they were only $1.80. Uh, they're called point pads, I'm not sure why, uh, but if you can tell, they're little moistened pads that you can put on your skin. This is a 10 count. Uh, they have vitamin E and hyaluric acid and collagen in them, as well as cucumber extract, so it's actually quite good for your skin. Looking at the illustrations, though, they say that they're showing that you can put them on your cheeks and your feet. Sure, why not? Um, I think I'd probably try them on my eyes. Reading the ingredients, it doesn't seem like anything that would irritate me. Uh, so that's probably what I'll use them for. I don't think my feet need pads. 
Maybe they do. Maybe I'm not aware of my feet ugliness, but uh, for now I'm just going to use them on my face. And they come in a re re uh, resealable envelope because they are moistened. So uh, here you can just take what you need and, and leave the rest for later. So that was a nice thing. I think they also had a lemon, a kiwi, a strawberry. Uh, so they did lots of different kinds. And these were only $1.80, but a lot of the beauty stuff is more. So you really do have to pay attention to the price tag on the shelf at Ichiban Khan when you go there because you don't want to get a surprise. So a Japanese store of course would be nothing without its really cute things. Uh, so these are little babushka paper clips and for some reason um, this motif is used a lot in Japan. They just really like the whole bad, you know, Russian grandmother thing going. Uh, but they're really cute. Uh, you can use them as bookmarks which I should probably do because I'm terrible about dog earring. It's a secret. I dog ear my pages. It's bad, I know. Um, but these would be <laughs> cure me of this. If not, I'll just use them around, you know, the house because they're otherwise cute, cute uh, little paper clips. And you got ten of them, so that was a nice little buy. And now on to the stickers, because you know I had to buy stickers. So Ichiban Khan definitely has a lot of good stickers, and I'd say a better selection than Daiso. Uh, once again, they're a little more expensive. These were buck eighty. Um, but I start off with these. Cute little traditional pandas, scratching each other's backs, rolling around. Look at that. That's adorable. Uh, so that's very cute. I really need to write more letters because then I could put stickers on them. Uh, because otherwise my collection is just growing. <laughs> I have nothing to do with them. Um, if you have any ideas for what I could actually use my stickers for, by all means tell me. Because otherwise I'm just a grown man collecting stickers in my 30s. So there's that. I also got these more cartoony pandas, and of course, uh, these ones are also dimensional or puffy. Not really sure what's going on here, uh, if you can tell. That's either a burrito or a sushi roll with a panda inside it. And down here we have a panda wearing a hamburger bun, because why wouldn't we? Um, but these are also very adorable. I think this was $1.80 as well. And these I could just not pass up. They are manatees or dudongs or sea cows, as you see. and. Got a pink and a gray one, and they're just being cute under the sea. They're also dimensional. Once again, uh, very cute stickers. Dollar eighty on these guys. And I got these autumn stickers, and of course uh, we're in spring now, uh, but you have to prepare for the future. You've got foxes and bears. I'm not sure why they're hiding in bushes, or otherwise wearing bushes, even while riding the bike. Um, but sometimes when you're in a Japanese dollar store or whatnot, you just have to accept it for what it is and move on from there. Don't ask too many questions. Just enjoy the show. So these were cute. Now these next two items I was really happy to see. Just to show you a little closer, they're flipbook seals. So you get a series of little stickers that if you were to put them on a pages of a book like, like Sa and flip it, you would see the picture moving. So I thought that was really cute. These were a bit more pricey. I think they were about $2.50 a piece, um, which is harsh, but I hadn't seen anything like this. And uh, from the Japanese stickers I've seen in Japantown and other places, I mean, $2.50 really is cheap for cute stickers. So I picked up these guys with the rabbits, and then these women that are somehow communicating with cats. Not really sure what the sequence of this one is. Um, there are two sets there. One thing they do suggest is potentially putting them on a calendar. Like so. See? So you can have a cat a day thing going on. Not sure what I'm going to use these for, but they were really cute. This is 280 uh, or 250 again as well. So we'll see what goes on with that. One thing that Ichiban does have for it over uh, Daiso is that they have a frequent sort of shopper card. So each of these scare, uh, squares represent $10 of purchases and when you fill it up you get a $5 gift certificate which I finally filled up my last one. Uh, they won't combine cards though so if you forget your card uh, and, and they stamp a new one for you you can't bring that in with your old card and combine them they just won't do that. They'll offer to uh, give you a receipt and you can hold on to that and bring that in with your old card but who's gonna carry on around a receipt for that long? Um, thinking about this further though, it's a bit depressing because each of these boxes does represent $10. There are 25 boxes on here, which means I spent over probably the course of a couple of years, all right, it took me a while, um, about $250 there to get my uh, $5 gift card. So 
it's a good thing, but it's sort of a bad thing. Just a reminder of how much you're spending um, at the Japanese dollar fifty store or whatnot. Uh, but yeah, finally got my card, uh, and I will be shopping there again, of course. So there you go. Now to move on to the Daiso portion of our video. I know you guys all like the Daiso based off the comments uh, that I received and just on the number of searches and views I've got by even tagging Daiso in my last uh, dollar store haul video. So uh, I know that's what you want, so let's see what I got this time. So in my last video I had mentioned uh, how excited I was to find plastic little animals at uh, my sort of independent dollar fifty store which is sort of janky um, because it's, they're really hard to find for some reason but Daiso had a couple different varieties now um, so they have these more farm traditional animals you got your dog your pigs oh you got two pigs you got a what well, looks like a mad cow I don't know maybe he's jumping over the moon you get a little calf a sheep a couple horses that's nice I can use those and these are more tropical or exotic animals I don't know you've got your lion um, your zebra an elephant I'm guessing this is supposed to be like a leopard or something and then you have like an ibex and along with all these normally African animals you've got a, a bull moose so of course you know whatever I'm gonna take what I can get I was really happy to see these at Daiso so now at least I have a good stash of them magnets Place, called hol place card holders, uh, any number of things I can make with these, so I'm all ready. I was really happy to see this. So it's a permanent marker set. You get a dozen markers. This was only $1.50 a Daiso. Um, they're not Sharpies, though they're uh, stylized to look like them. Let's, looking at the tips, like a standard sharpie tip uh, sort of thick not the ultra fine but they write well so I, I, I mean a normal sharpie would cost but maybe a dollar fifty a piece so to get a dozen for a dollar fifty was a nice surprise and in such a wide variety of colors next for whatever reason in my office we don't have correction tape I'm thinking it's because people just don't really write things down anymore that they expect you know to be perfect for other people to review usually people just taking notes on their own uh, I bought two different kinds because I sort of misread uh, the packaging initially I saw that this was five millimeters wide and for some reason I assumed this was ten millimeters wide uh, which make it a centimeter uh, but actually looking at the package it's only five millimeters wide but it's ten millimeters long but wait this one's five mil millimeters wide and 12 meters long and it's a heck of a lot cuter so forget you this is the one I'm rocking at the office uh, I love having this for when I do need to make whatever correction and it's just a you know a nice little article to have on your whimsical article to have on your desk because office work can be boring don't get me wrong from what I said before about Ichiban having a lot of cute erasers and stickers Daiso still, still does have quite a few cute things themselves uh, these are actually, speaking of office supplies, little office supply shaped erasers. Once again, I have no idea what I'm going to use these for. Uh, I actually haven't really written in pen uh, or in pencil for a long time. I usually just write in pen and scratch it out if I don't want because they're my notes and nobody's going to see them. Um, but someday, you know, some little kid's going to be really happy to get these in like a little care package. So I'm sort of just saving up for someday that's going to come, maybe. I don't know. I also got these cute little clothes pins with patterned paper on them. I had resisted buying things like this before just because they have a lot of plain clothes pins at Daiso in a lot of different sizes including teeny tiny ones um, and I was just like well I can put my own paper or, or decoration on them I don't need to buy pre-decorated ones but I really like this sort of floral floral blue pattern and I've got a baby shower coming up that I might think about trying to use these for. Um, we'll see, but I just thought these were, were cute. Daiso in general has a lot of dishware. Now I went to the big one in Japantown in San Francisco, which is really, really big. I mean, it's almost as big, I wouldn't say as a target or as a city target because our, our targets in San Francisco are smaller, uh, but it's definitely bigger than like Walgreens and a lot of other stores. I really like this mug because if you can see it's a great way to 
to freshen up on your Japanese. Now, in Japanese, you've got three, you've got three sort of alphabets. Um, one is called hiragana, which is these letters, these are characters here. Okay. These are generally used for Japanese words or for um, clarifying the meaning of the more complex kanji. Looking back at this packaging, whenever you see a, pa uh, a Japanese character with a lot of lines in it, that's basically a kanji. It comes from the, the Chinese characters and it was sometimes changed for the Japanese um, for, for Japanese speakers. Uh, but the kanji are really meant to express an entire sort of idea or word, although they can have you know, several different meanings. Whereas the hiragana, which are these more simplified characters here, are only representing sounds or sound combinations. Um, so that's why if you have kanji, a lot of the times you'll see tiny little hiragana written above it, just so people who don't recognize the kanji can still pronounce the word and understand what the meaning is. The third type of Japanese character set is called katakana, and that's what's written under the English words here. Basically, katakana is used for uh, a foreign words, non-Japanese words. So they could be English, or they could be Portuguese, or any number of things, but uh, that's how you spell out words that are not native to Japan, or otherwise assimilated to Japan. So what I like about this mug is that you get the English word, and then you get the katakana word underneath, under it, what would sort of be the uh, translation if someone was going to try to say the English word in Japanese. So you see pig here, and there it says pigu, okay? Uh, see panda there, and then in katakana below it, it says panda. What's interesting about this mug, though, is to see which animals have actual Japanese names and which don't. Where They're just names that are used, they just use the English name written in katakana. So you'll get things like a uh, hippo, which is, uh, which is uh, kaba in Japanese, and you'll get a tiger, which is tora, and you'll get an elephant, which is zo. So you think of these things maybe being in Africa, but there's actually a Japanese word for them. Of course, I guess elephants are in Southeast Asia and uh, India as well. But then you'll get things like, say, a gorilla, which doesn't really have a Japanese word. That says gorira, and it says gorira in katakana as well. So there's a Japanese word for hippo, of all things, but not a Japanese word for gorilla. So that was just really sort of odd to see. And also, there's a, a Japanese word, once again, for like tiger, um, but there's not a Japanese word for panda, which you would think it's just over, you know, across the sea in mainland China. Um, but no, they just say panda, or panda, I should say, and panda is the same thing. Um, so that's sort of interesting, but I thought this was a cute little primer, um, just a sort of refresher of what these uh, different animals are called. So a great way, simple way to potentially learn some uh, additional Japanese while, uh, you know, getting your morning coffee. So I thought that was really cute. So I got some of these bottle stoppers. I've had, it's been hit and miss for me on these guys before because sometimes they just won't fit the bottle. Uh, and I thought wine bottles and such were usually pretty uniform across the way, but it seems not. Um, I'd like to test these out, but what am I going to do? Where would I ever find a wine bottle? Hmm. 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 Oh, look, I found one. So let's see if this actually fits in there, because then I can use this to plug up a wine bottle or non-wine bottle, um, rather than trying to, like, shove a cork back in there. So let's open this up and see if it works. So we've got this little stopper. Just put it in. Hold down the clamp and it makes that little rubber ring inside expand and oh yeah it's holding so good these guys fit great um, so now I can reseal uh, certain bottles if need be so that's nice good deal I mentioned in my previous video that Daiso really does have pretty much everything they've got dog supplies I saw this time they had baby supplies they've got hardware and things like that I picked up a measuring tape because for whatever reason I lost my last measuring tape I'm sure it's somewhere in my apartment uh, I bought one at the hardware store, but that was like six bucks. It was 16 feet long. Uh, this one's only 11 feet, but this was $1.50, so it's nice to have an extra. And it's really, it, I mean, it's just as good as a regular, you know, store main brand or more expensive measuring tape, I guess. I'll get 11 feet of it. It retracts. It locks. 
Um, it even has a nice little belt clip and a loop for you know, holding on to. So this thing's not going anywhere. One thing I do like about the packaging for this is it actually has a warning about um, not hurting yourself closing the tape too quickly. Now I have actually had it snap up back on me before. I'm being like, oh, you know, a little, a little excited. But I've never actually seen a warning on packaging for it. So this was cute. Um, but yeah, this is an extra one. I like having the smaller ones too because a lot of times, uh, because I have a pretty small apartment, if I have a piece of furniture or something in mind, I will have really specific measurements that it would need to fit in, can't exceed. So this is uh, very helpful just to be able to carry around um, if I see a piece of furniture at Goodwill or thrift shop or whatnot, uh, just to know that it will, that piece of furniture will fit in my space. Uh, so it's very convenient. So I bought some more felt. Uh, once again, I think this is about two feet by two and a half feet of felt. Um, the project that I mentioned I was going to do for St. Patrick's Day with the felt that I bought in the previous video didn't really happen in time. Got to a little time crunch. I'm still going to film the video, but probably just save it for next year. Um, I might give a hint, you a hint of what I make, uh, and if you really want to see the video ahead of time, I'll post it, but otherwise I will get on that. Um, I wanted this gray felt, and I really like this color. It's a nice heather gray um, because I wanted to make try my hand at making some different kind of coasters. I have coasters right now, but I'm not really super happy with how they act all the time, so I wanted to see if using more of an absorbent material like this on top of something solid like a soapstone uh, would make for a better coaster. So that's why I picked this up. So I also got a little selection of acrylic yarn. These were $1.50 a piece. Looking at how much yarn you get though, 45 grams for $1.50, I could have probably got a better price um, going, to a, going to a Joann's or Michael's or something and just buying you know, one of the Red Heart cheap yarn, acrylic yarns. Um, but I wanted a variety and I also don't have a lot of space for storage, so buying the smaller packages works for me. I bought these yarns because I really want to get into these decorative pom-poms. Now, um, I got this book at Japantown, I think from Kinokuniya, which is the book, main bookstore there. They may have had, had a special order for me, uh, but it is, as you can see, they've got very interesting sort of pom-poms that you can make. Let's see if I can get a cute picture here. It's got lots of flowers. A moon. I like the moon. Oh, look, like a bonsai. That's cool. Then you get into more figurative things letters. Yeah. And even little you know, babushkas, like I said, for some reason this is a really popular motif in Japan for, I don't know, I guess Russian grandmothers, why not? The instructions, as you can see, are all in Japanese, and although I took about six years of Japanese and was uh, going to have it as my second major in college, that was a long time ago. So, it's, uh, my Japanese is not at all that good. But luckily, the illustrations are pretty self-explanatory, so you can just follow along with those. Uh, they show you how to make the mold, or the, uh, the form and everything. Uh, so yeah, I, I bought this book a while ago. I really just wanted to get into making them, so getting the yarn was sort of jump-starting me on doing that finally. I also got some of this air dry clay. Um, in different packaging they call it paper clay. I'm not really sure what's in it. Natural fiber, water, glue. Okay, so it's probably paper clay. Uh, but this is great. It, it air dries and it's just another way to sort of mold things. I have Fimo dough and Sculpey and all of that which you would have to bake. Uh, this just is a different different product with slightly different characteristics. Even when it uh, dries, it can be a little spongy, so it's almost like it turns into a hard rubber, uh, so which makes for an interesting texture depending on your project. I have this in a couple other colors, but I didn't have it in white, and there is the symbol for white, Shiro. Um, they actually have it also in Spanish, which I like, Blanco. That's nice. So a Japanese product, Japanese writing, and Spanish writing, and English writing. Why not? Um, no, that wasn't English, but that that's English <laughs> because it's an international world. So, yeah, I got some of this. It's $1.50. You can make lots of cute little things with it. Uh, going along with the hardware stuff, I needed some rubber gloves. I had used up my last pair and uh, an Easter egg project that I'm going to hopefully post very soon, being that Easter's this Sunday. 
uh, would require me to need plastic or rubber gloves, so I just want to make sure I have some of these on hand. Unfortunately, you only get six pieces of these, so it's like three pair, so 50 cents a pair at $1.50. Uh, I bought the large, uh, but we'll see if it actually fits me because um, large in Japan and large in America is a little different. I don't even have really big hands, uh, but uh, we'll see if these work for me. I also picked up another spray bottle because uh, for some reason I tend to find lots of uses for them. Um, the one I bought in my last video, it's doing fine. It hasn't snapped at the neck. I mentioned before that there can be issues with just the weight of the liquid that's inside causing too much pressure on this and breaking it. Uh, it's still doing fine, so maybe when I had bad experiences before, it was just like a bad plastic dye lot or something. This one's cute because it has these stripes on it, but what I realized is that they're not painted on. They're actually like little rubber bands. So you can move them around, take them off if you just want a pink you know, bottle because having the stripes would be just too ostentatious. Uh, but no, that was just something nice and it also gives you a little bit more grip. So yeah, always good to have extra ones of these on hand. So I picked up these things because I'm a man, I have sweaty feet, and I like to be able to dry my shoes out between wearing them because then it you know, helps prevent odor. Usually I would just stuff them with newspaper, but these are little uh, pouches that are made specifically for drying your shoes. And looking at the back, they just basically have uh, silica gel in them, which is what's in those tiny little packets that you'll find inside in front of some packages. Uh, it says do not eat. Uh, basically they uh, pull in moisture from the air and uh, you know wick it out of whatever is surrounding it and help keeping it dry. I actually save those up when I get them because they're useful if I'm making candy or something like that where I'm going to seal it in an airtight container but there's still potential for it to soften over time. Uh, it's just nice to have those things in there to help uh, regulate the humidity level. Uh, so I got these for my shoes because I need to regulate the humidity level in my shoes. I only bought one pair, even though I could probably use more. I just want to see how they do. And ultimately, if they do do well, I could probably use up all those saved up silica packets from all these years and just make my own. But we'll see. Uh, for now, I've just got, got the one pair. I also bought some just classic little birthday candles. They actually come with holders, which is nice, and they have these stripes, which are cute. I like having candles around, uh, because especially in the office place, because you never know when you're going to be like, oh, it's actually someone's birthday today, let's make something a little special. Uh, so it's always nice to have these. Um, usually I store them in the freezer. I've heard that helps prolong them. I'm not sure. Um, but these were, were really cute and quite tall, which was nice. So I picked those up, and like I said, they were, or like you can see, they are only they were only a dollar. So there you go. So even at Daiso, you'll find things that are cheaper, which is nice. So I showed you these Chaco rooms in the last video. Um, that package I opened up didn't last for much longer after I turned off the camera for very good reasons. Uh, but I wanted to pick up some of these Chaco cones too because these are the other option just to show you what they look like. Uh, one thing I will note about these guys is they were actually a dollar. So I complained about how the packaging had seemed to shrink over time. But if I'm only paying a dollar then it makes me feel a little better. Let's open these up so you can see what they look like. I don't think they look as convincingly natural or whatnot as the Chalker Rooms do, but they're still a little funny shape, so let me open those up. So I learned my lesson from last time that I shouldn't dump my chocolate items directly on this white sheet that I'm using as a background because even with the uh, light lights that I'm using, they will start melting and you'll get a chain or a stain on your sheet. So pulling these out, Got a little cookie dust on them. But you can see, you can sort of get the pine cone feeling, but it's just not as you know, convincing a, uh, a form as the, the mushroom ones are. Here at the back, you can see there's actually a considerable amount of cookie that's going on in the core there. Um, but they're still just as delicious. It's the same chocolate, it's the same cookie as the Chaco Rooms, uh, but these are just alternatives. I actually find that the Chaco Rooms a lot of times will be sold out, but these will be left, so definitely the Chaco Rooms are the more popular option. And lastly, they had these little you know, faux modern um, chairs, and I, I couldn't figure out what they were for, but it, this one was so cute, and it was $1.50 that I picked it up. I thought it might be for like a cell phone, but yeah, it's not really going to hold the cell phone, so I'm not sure what I'd put in there, but I just thought I'd get it, and I'll find something cute for cute to do with it on my desk.
So that makes it for what I picked up at Daiso and Ichiban Con this time. But wait, I'm going to give you a bonus. I also stopped down at Nijia Market, which is in the Japan Center. It's a Japanese supermarket. It's a little cramped and small, but you will get a lot of things in there that you've never seen before, a lot of different varieties. So I want to show you what I picked up there. Can't show you everything because I some of it was just lunch and it's in my belly now. But what I can show you are these which are little packets of powdered leaf or green tea. So you mix it with water, cold water, and you have iced green tea. I like that idea a lot. I like iced tea, but I'm sort of too lazy to, you know, make hot, brew hot tea and then let it cool and yada yada. So getting these instant packages was nice. Uh, they had a sweetened version. I picked the unsweetened because I like to choose what my own sweetener is. Usually I go with Splenda. Don't like sugar, don't really like equal. So this was a better option. I also picked up a mochi. Now if you don't know what mochi is, it is actually the uh, protein from rice. So you'll make rice flour and then you'll wash away the starch and you'll be left with this protein. It's sort of like a, a wheat gluten, which I know gets a bad rap, but ultimately it's just the protein in the, uh, the item. It's usually a dessert. Uh, you'll see it sometimes even wrap or surrounding ice cream or whatnot. This per particular uh, mochi has red beans all through it. Red beans are a really common sort of dessert item that you'll see in J Japan. Uh, they're sweet, so um, it, it lends itself well. So I picked up that. And lastly, I stopped at the Goodwill, which is in Japantown or the Fillmore at uh, Post Street and Fillmore. And I picked this little guy up. He's one of those solar bobbers, so he's got the little panel there. You put him in the sun and his head moves back and forth. Which The effect of which I like because it's sort of like, you know, a cobra or a snake sort of shaking their head around. Uh, now some people might be like, but wait Will, this is a statue for the year of the snake. We're now in the year of the goat or the sheep depending on where you are in Asia usually. Um, so I, you really won't be able to use that. So you really won't be able to use the snake to represent the zodiac year that we're in until 2025. Yes, that's true, um, but like I said, I just like the motion of the snake because it looks like he's sort of giving you attitude, um, which I think is just cute. So I picked him up. It was, just, you know, it was goodwill. It wasn't uh, going to cost me a lot. Uh, one thing that I did note is that it, this was actually um, sort of a giveaway or a freebie from the Chinese Community Health Plan, which um, is something in San Francisco which does exactly like that. So they actually pass these out to people as prizes. I bought it at Goodwill. Uh, but I'm really happy. I think it's cute. And like I said, I like the snake. So that's awesome. So that's it for my haul video. I hope you like it. Uh, like I said, I want to get a DIY video out before Easter just to do something sort of egg related. And we'll see what else I can come up with the rest of the month. Uh, hopefully I'll see you soon. And thank you again for checking out my channel. Bye bye.